All right, now in class we were talking about microtubules and that there are motors that can translocate on microtubules. So I wanted to give you the example of uh, how squirrel fish are able to camouflage themselves against different backgrounds uh, by dispersing pigment in their uh, in their uh, scales that are uh, able to disperse pigment in special uh, cells called chromatophores. So let's take a look at how this happens. And I'm going to just start with some of the basics. And that is, first of all, that we are going to be looking at microtubules. And I'll be drawing this on the next slide. And that uh, those microtubules are going to be tr uh, allowing the transport of a, some kind of cargo. In this example, the cargo is going to be a red pigment and it will be the dispersal of that red pigment that will determine um, whether or not the cells look actually red or white and um, that will turn the fish either red or white. Now the dispersal of the pigment is going to uh, occur by the use of protein motors and because the pigment has to go in two directions it will require two motors so one of the motors that you learned about in class is the motor dynein and this is the motor that is able to take material towards the centrosome in other words it is it takes things from the plus end of the microtubule and drives it towards the minus end of the microtubule the second motor that will be required is kinesin and this is a plus end directed motor which means things are transported in the direction away from the centrosome so from the minus end of the microtubule to the plus end of the microtubule okay so what we're going to do is look at these cells under two conditions And these are the, condi the main conditions that the squirrel fish would find itself on. And that is, it may find itself on sand. Not on land, but this is in the ocean. So if it has sand as its background, sand is light in color. As opposed to, they could be near a coral reef. and this actually is red in color. So we're going to be looking at a cell and trying to convert that cell from appearing to be light uh, as opposed to red. So I'm going to draw the skeleton of two cells here um, for both sand and the coral reef. In both cells I'm just going to show a centrosome as a dot and then all the microtubules are attached to that centrosome at their minus end, right? The plus end is at the far end. So I'm just going to draw two duplicate cells right now with the centrosome and the microtubules. I'll go ahead and label one of these. That represents a microtubule. And the centralized dot in the center, that is the center zone. And the difference between the, the way the cell looks depending upon where the pigment is dispersed is actually if the cell is going to look light the pigment is all concentrated at the centrosome in a very tight little dot and that makes the cell as a whole look relatively light so this red represents the pigment. So in order for the cell to look light, first of all, the pigment has to cluster at the centrosome. zone. 
And secondly, if you say, well, what of the two motors, the plus N directed motor, which is kinesin, or the minus N directed motor, which is dynein, which one should be active? It's the dynein, not the kinesin. So the dynein is the active motor. And that causes the pigment to be clustered towards the centrosome. Now the opposite is true when you're looking at the coral reef. In order for the cell to look red, the pigment has to be equally dispersed along the microtubules. And so as this pigment disperses away from the centrosome, the cell begins to take on a red color. And so the scales that contain these cells begin to look red. And this happens when the uh, fish is over the red coral reef. It sees the red. This goes through their central nervous system, or their nervous system, and um, that is relayed to the cells. So in this case, the pigment needs to be dispersed And it's got to be dispersed away from the centrosome. And in order to do that, we need that plus N directed motor to be active, which is kinesin. OK, so now let's take a look at this in action. So if we were to look at a video now, these are chromatophores. And you can see the pigment dispersal. That pigment dispersal is happening along microtubules in these cells. And when it disperses, the cell looks red. And when you, it goes into this little uh, uh, concentrated area, then that's when the tissue mostly looks white.